Hello. Hey, Odion. Yeah, hi. What's up? I love that jumper. <laughs> That's the man. That's the goat. That's the only shoe. If I get married one day, I'm wearing Jordans to my wedding. <laughs> no way you're going to do that. Yeah. Uh, why not? It's stylish. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll put like diamond crust on them. I'm a Manchester United fan, if you didn't notice. But um, that's it. Uh, no, of hey. United. Oh, of course. So <laughs> I mean, everyone knows that I have a tattoo. I, it's on my leg, so I don't know if I can flick it up and show you. But um, <laughs> one of the things United fans were so excited when you came to United, like super, mm. super excited, and absolutely still love you. I'm yeah. always kicking up a fuss about you. And the sad part is that for the most of the time that you've been at United so far, it's been playing, you know, behind closed doors without the fans. Uh, that's the most difficult part because when I came, we had some, we had fans there. I think I came in February. We had fans until I think first or second week of March, you know. Yeah. Uh, I'm very happy and I thank God I experienced the atmosphere in Old Trafford. You know, you know when you watch it back there on TV, it's different, you know, mm. than being in the stadium. The game against Man City, I was sitting down on the bench and I saw the atmosphere in the stadium. Wow, I've never seen some something like that in my life. You know, it's electrifying. You can see the fans, you can see the crowd, you can see how beautiful the stadium is, how big it is, and we what even makes it perfect that we won. 2-0 against Man City, you know, the stadium was going crazy, you know, I've never in my life seen, seen something like that. You know? I'm going to say that because I'm pulling up this picture because that was the last match I went to actually and we got to watch it with Sir Marcus Rashford himself. Uh, <laughs> did you say that you grew up as a United fan, that you did Yeah, yeah, United yeah, so yeah, yeah. Take me back because it's almost, I believe, near January now, it's almost a year since you knew you were coming to Man United. What was that like? I mean, goosebumps. I get goosebumps for you and it wasn't even me signing for United. Uh, it was it was a good one and it was uh, a tough one, you know, because uh, before I came to United, uh, I never believed I would play for United, you know, because I'm a, I'm a when you say a, a real fan, not just, I had people saying they support a team, mm. then they play, but mine is, if you ask anybody where I grew up in, uh, we fight because of Man United game, you know, we <laughs> quarrel, we argue, you understand? Every weekend when, for example, Arsenal is playing, uh, Chelsea is playing, Man is playing, you have to you have to hope your team win so that you can have mouth to argue with the other team and insult them, you know? So sometimes when my team don't do well and the other team do well, they started insulting me and sometimes I cry, you know? I cry because we argue and we're feeling sad and all that, you know? That's how it is. I have, yeah, I have to save money to go pay in the in in in, in a, like they call it a viewing center, you know. Uh -huh. It's like a small, small hall like this, like a room. You'll see like 50 people like this. If I tell you now I'm the happiest man on earth for my dream to come to pass, you know, because it's not everybody dream comes to pass because some you might dream it. It won't come to power, but mine, I fulfill my dream for playing for my United. When this talk about my United started, I did not believe, you know. I never believed my agent talked to me about my United. I said, first of all, I think I'm playing in China, in Shanghai. Mm. That hold is against me. I'm 30 years old. That hold is against me. The coronavirus pandemic just started in China. That hard is against me. So I said, I don't think this can happen. This is for Man United, you know. But I just left it that way. And I want to go back to the ninth that I got a call from my agent that Man United want to do the deed. I was like 10 p.m., 11 p.m. Shanghai time. I was on my bed naked, you understand, <laughs> trying to sleep. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to sleep after that. Yeah. I said, I did not sleep till daybreak, you know. So when I got a call, I said, oh, we're going to talk to Man United, I want to do the deal. Oh, before they told me they have some other player they're looking up to, but those options did not work out. They want a loan deal for me and all that. I said, no way. I jump up from the bed, tight to where they said, who are they going to speak to? I went to knock the 
translator room because our director of sport does not speak English, you know. Uh-huh. So I had to knock the translator room, say, you have to go with the director now. Man United want me on loan and I want this to happen and all that. So I started speaking back and forth and all that. I said, you're going to get a pay cut. I said, I don't care whatever pay cut, just make this day happen. I want to go to Manchester United. This is my dream. I was praying. I was on my bed shivering, praying and hoping <laughs> this is going to happen. And if you see me, I was like mad man. I was just walking around my room. and not, Praying the rosary, not, everything. <laughs> oh God. I did not I did not sleep throughout the 6 a.m. in the morning. If somebody tell me a month or two months before then that you're gonna sign for my United, I would just slap that person and say, Why are you talking to me? Don't don't raise my hope high, you know. But I see it happening and I played in Old Trafford, the stadium I watched back when I was in Lagos back home there. I paid to watch players playing there. I played there and I scored a goal there. And it's difficult for me to explain this, you know, but I think all the, I would cherish all these other days of my life, you know, because it's a dream, it's a big dream for me that come come to pass. I'm fulfilled now, see, as, as a footballer, if I don't achieve anything from now to when I finish my career, I'm fulfilled. I used to get into arguments with the boys at school in high school about Man United too. Yeah. And now, <laughs> now they always ask me like, okay, okay, we know. Because now they get scared. But you got to get feisty. It sounds like Nigeria is just like Jamaica <laughs> in certain Yeah. Sense. I mean, you mm. probably must have celebrated like I did to see, to wake up, open up the Premier League table, and there is Manchester United at the top right before a massive clash against Liverpool. I mean, what was the move? Because you're there behind the scenes. You're talking to the players and everybody. What's the, what's the feeling like? Has it... Um, is it a bit surreal? Has it kind of taken everyone a little bit by surprise? Or are you not surprised because we've seen the work that's gone in? We are not carried away, even though we're top of the table now, because we know the it's just 17 games, you know. There's yeah. still a lot of games to play. And we still have a big game again this weekend against Liverpool, which hopefully we, we want to win that so that we can increase the gap from, from the top. It's going to be a tough one. Do you but go I think, in that game feeling a bit bigger like with your chest a little higher knowing it's like one upon you know one of the fiercest rivals as a man united fan you'll know yeah yeah because this is kind of game every player want to play because it's a big game it's a tough one you know yeah so we know going there to to go and lose is not acceptable because we're on top of them if they win then they're going to be on top so we want to keep that that position so we have to go there and give all our best and try to win the game or get a point from there this is an unpredictable year, obviously, with the coronavirus pandemic. Mm. It's affecting clubs differently as well. Mm. And then there's the whole, if you want to believe in stats, the last time United were top of the table, they won the league, you know. Um, so have you let yourself even start thinking along those lines? Or do you really just say, all right, let me chill, let me chill? <laughs> the fans are going to say their own and the, the pundits are going to say all that. But like, as a player, you don't get carried away with those kind of talks, you know, because then... You started putting a lot of pressure in yourself and in the team, you know. Like I said, we just want to take it game by game, you know. Now, the biggest game now is Liverpool this weekend. Then after that, is the next game is the biggest one again. So that's how it is, you know. For you, working with him now for about a year, I suppose, what's um, what surprised you the most about him or what's been the, the, the best aspect about him that probably some of the people we don't get to see? He, he, it's a nice guy, you know, always a nice guy. And in a big team like Manchester United, it's difficult to keep everyone happy, you know, but he has been trying to manage that, you know, because everybody want to play. You understand? Sometimes when you're not playing, you're not happy, but he has been able to manage that and all that. And uh, thanks, thanks to God, my path crossed Man United. And after God, it's thanks to Ole, you know, because if it's not him, I won't be in Manchester United today. So I'm always grateful to him and um, and the way he has taken the pressure because coaching Manchester United, it's not easy. It's a big pressure because the fans want to win every weekend. And we know, of course, with Edison Cavani there now, it's, yeah. there's always competition and that's part mm. of being a professional in any. Yeah. Um, but they're saying that they would have wanted to see more opportunities with you as well. What do you, you know, tell the fans, I suppose, the ones that are feeling that you're kind of being hard done? I don't make problem. I don't complain. I just go to training every day, give my best, work hard. And it's the decision of the coach to make his team. 
But lately, I've not been playing much, which is the feel that is unfair to me. And mine as a player, I just go there and give my best whenever I've been called upon and all that. But I know I deserve to play more, but this is the coach decision. If you, if you, if I'm not in the team, then I give the team 100% support. Since it's January, and of course, there's all the January transfer talk and whatnot, do you think you're closer to probably taking on a new challenge elsewhere? To that, be Manchester. So comes this month and I don't know where I'm going to be. But if it's possible, I would like to stay here. But if not, then I have to go to have options, you know. Mm -hmm. So I just wait for my agent. They are doing their job. He's doing his job. I'm doing mine. So come to month end, he's going to call me and tell me, oh, this is what we have on Grand and all. And then we'll have to decide what's the best for us. Then we take it. Well, let me ask you this, then, because um, as you know, uh, ESPN is an American company and we exclusively broadcast MLS and MLS has been growing, you know, um, in the last couple of years, we've seen the likes of Pirlo, David V and Zlatan mm. even go there. Um, has it, what do you actually think of the, the league and I suppose how it's grown? Has it even caught your interest any at all? Yeah, yeah, because I've been watching MLS and the league is doing well and growing and is part of what I would like to achieve too, if it's possible, I would like to play in MLS, but like I said, I, I have to wait for offers and see what's going on. But the league is doing well. And if the opportunity arises for me to go to MLS, I will take it. I will grab it with two hands because the league is doing well, the, the good life there and all that. So I would love it if the opportunity comes. A lot of players are, are going there. So why not? I would like to go. I would like to go if the opportunity arises. You know? And the league is growing, having experienced player playing there doing well and all that. So, of course, it's, it's, it's an opportunity too, if, if, if it comes for me. Have any of them been like, oh? Well, well I've, not, I've not really think about that, but I think the, the David Beckham club is growing. I think he just took over there and all that. So, if an opportunity comes from there, why not? Or elsewhere in, in, in the United States, I would love to. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.